I may be about to piss a lot of you guys off because I am not going to do much butt welding on what I'm about to do. We're actually going to do an overlap weld. I know, right? Something unheard of in this hobby. We're going to do it today, right after the break. Restoration of a classic Ford is a journey of discovery. Let Autocrafters help you with yours. We offer quality parts for Falcon, Fairlane, F-Series, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. Contact us today. All right, so we're going to be working on the backing plate on the Ranchero today. Now, we've already got some of our, our backers put in. This week, what I'm really going to concentrate on is showing you guys how to do what we're doing here. Now, what I'm going to be showing you is actually a current technique that shops use when they're putting a new piece on another piece, like if you're putting a frame rail insert in or whatever. We're also going to be using the same technique when we do the frame rail on the passenger side of the 65 Ranchero. But what I wanted to go over a couple of salient things that you need to know. Now, I'll show you this right now. Now, this basically is our piece of metal that's going to be going in here. You will note that I have it marked as Exhibit A here on the inside of the, uh, inner, or the uh, panel here. And what I'm going to do is, is I went in and I put a line across the bottom back so I would know how far down I could put my holes for my spot welds or some people call them plug welds. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. The next thing I wanted to talk about is you'll note that everything on here is nice and shiny. Even the area around the plug spots, I went in and ground those down to get them nice and clean. On the Rancheros, there's a seam sealer that's right here along where this panel comes in. This was actually one piece that was put together, but for some reason there was seam sealer here. Always make sure you clean that kind of stuff up because it will contaminate your welds. Uh, and really that's it. What I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna go ahead and put my plate in. My A is up on both ends of it. It's up on one side and the other. And I'm going to set this in here and clamp it in place. I'm trying to get as close to the bottom of this brace as I possibly can. Now I'm only going to I'm only going to weld this one, this one, and this one. I'm going to leave these two in the wind here because I'm not real sure what we're going to end up with uh, whenever we start going back in and really putting this thing back together. We may have to do some mucking around to make that fit a little bit better, especially with having to butt weld this in. So we're going to be doing a combination here. We're going to be doing a little bit of butt welding, but we're also going to be doing a quite a lot of overlap welding where we're basically putting two pieces together and using this thing as a heat sink for what we have. Now I'm going to go over to the tabletop and talk to you about how we got to these pieces that are all the way out across the back plate of this using this and the other piece. Huzzah! Good thing there's not a headliner in there. All right, so what we're going to be doing here is this is the plate that goes in on the back wall where we've put in our uh, backing plates. Now this is the top section of it and this is the bottom section where the L bracket normally goes on a 64, 63, 60 even Ranchero. One of the things that caused Ford a problem and caused people a problem after a little while was the fact that these were basically just filled up with sealer that would go away after a little while and with that being the case you would get water inside the what they call people call the smugglers wells and basically Ford didn't do anything with those until later. In 1966 when they changed to the larger format Fairlane, they took this section here and basically opened it up and made it so that you can access that. The other thing it did for them then was it also made it where it breathed a little bit better so it was less likely, less likely, to rust out in those areas. Most of the time if you have a ranch here with rust problems it's probably not the cowl. It's actually probably going to be a lot of it in the back areas where, as guys call them, the smugglers wells are. You'll notice that this one, the bottom edge of it's pretty badly eaten out on both sides. Boom, there you go. What we're going to do though is we're going to use this as our plating that we use to be able to weld this back in. And you'll notice that there's coves between each one of the larger coves here. And these coves right here, uh, we just cut those out and left a spacer. That's going to allow us to put our separator plates in that we got from the guys at Harbor Freight. They're just the little clamps that you put on there so you can put those in there in the spaces where these were at. and It'll hold the panel at a good spacing for your welding. Um, and then this is just going to go right back in there but like I said I do need to go in and fix this spot right here. There's a little dingle here where something sharp hit it probably in the eons that this thing's been on the road. 
So we're going to flatten that back out, make that nice again, and then we're going to put this thing in there, clamp it in place for you, and show you what we're going to do with the weld up. Uh, first thing that I'm going to do after I get this cleaned up and, and flattened out is I'm going to weld in the brace for you though. I'm not going to fill these holes up. I'm just going to edge set them so that the bracket sits nice. Got a nice sizzle. I'm pushing to that edge. This one didn't set quite right. Now we're set. Okay. I'm having to give Andrew a look. Andrew's helping me. Say hi, hi there, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew's, Andrew's helping me in here, so he's going to take Logan's place because Logan is in school today. So, hey, if he's in school, I'm not going to gig him for not being here today. We're going to go ahead and set the plate in here. We're going to use these big clamps. Now, you, if you're going to do any kind of sheet metal work, get you some of these. You can get these down at uh, Harbor Freight even carries these now. These happen to be a pair of old Vice scripts that I've had for ages, uh, and Lord knows I wish I had more. But we're gonna set the plate up and I'm gonna to try to put one of these clamps like this in there so that we can put it right here so we get the gap we need for doing our weld. I'm gonna put the plate up and the plate goes to the back side of it, like out there. And we need to get it pulled over toward me a little bit and drop it down. Drop it down until it's sitting right on that, right below that line there. Okay. Sprong, 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 sprong. Okay. Gonna get it on the bottom plate here. Now I'm gonna probably see if I can pull it down just a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna stick, drop it just a little bit, Andrew. Stick that in there, and now you need to pull yours down and set the plate on your side. And I'll put one of these like right here. Okay. And I'll push that uh, up against the metal yeah. and get your clamp on there. I got, I'll hold this, you put your clamp in there. Okay. And uh, just clamp it down below that. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start working the set on these. I'm gonna have to drop your side just a little bit, but now I've got it in there, I can mess with it. Um, what I'll have Andrew do now is we're gonna go on this side over here I'm going to give Andrew one of the bars, take a bar, go around to the other side and we'll set this one over here. It's not going in. It's not going in? Let me give you some more. Give me, give me a little bit. There you go, right there. There we go. All right. Perfect. Got it in there? Yep. It's okay, in the I'm going to tighten it up to the top and I'll pop it in there with a hammer. There we go. Okay, and now I'm going to need to tap that into place a little bit. I'm going to go over here and work this side. I'm going to just work my way through here and get all of these, uh, the spacing on all these set and get these clamps in between as many of these as I can. I was originally going to try to make this all one big strip and just use sheet metal screws, but I decided to go in and do it this way. This gives me the space on the back side of this to go in and weld to the cleats that are here. All right, we got everything set up. We've got our um, clamps in here that separate the panel enough to give us a good weld to point. We have a piece of wood on a jack in here because this section right here was dropping low compared to the passenger side. And it did that before, so I wanted to go back in and make sure that this is sitting where it needs to. Clamps are tight. Uh, we have a tight spot here uh, on this first rib um, from the outside of the car. This one right here is probably where we'll put one of our tacks. We're not gonna tack all the way to the outside wall just yet. And like right here, right here. Um, so right before B, the, um, the next panel over here. All these we're gonna, if where we've got a tight sit to the metal, we're gonna put a spot weld. If we don't have a tight sit to the metal, we are not gonna spot weld. After we get these set, we'll start using our big C clamps to go in 
and clamp the two pieces of metal together to get the spot set. But I'll show you all that in just a second. First thing I'm going to say is the enemy of done is perfection. Because if you try to make everything perfect, you're never going to get finished with your project. It is all, everything you do, a learning process. And that's enough I'm going to say about that. What I'm going to talk about now is what I did when I welded the back wall back into the ranch harrow. I struggled with what to do with this because there really isn't a good way for one guy to go in and butt weld the, uh, the panel back in using the, the panel uh, clips that we have here at the shop. And I'm also going to say that there are about 75 million different ways to do things. You're going to, it's like a plumber coming into the house talking about the last plumber that was there saying, this guy sucked, but I'm really good. And then the next plumber that comes into your house says, that guy sucked, but I'm really good. And I'm not saying that anybody's right or wrong. I'm saying there are different ways of doing things. And sometimes that's what happens. What I chose to do here was based off of the class that I took with Larry Shirley at Finish Masters. Finish Masters had some classes on bodywork. This was a method they used for putting frame rails together and panel setups on cars. So what I'm gonna do briefly is I'm gonna talk about that. Now what I have here is four washers to symbolize my weld. I'm gonna pull these three out. This washer is my first weld. Now there's obviously not a hole in the center of it, but there's that first weld. And what I, my goal was to go in and put the next weld about 50% into the first weld, the next weld into about 50% of that weld, and the next weld into 50% of that weld. And then I was going to go in, and I did. I quenched it after that to hopefully reduce the amount of panel uh, dive that you get from doing the welds. Robert McCartney talked about that when we did the welding episode. You can see a link to it down here, and it's also in the description underneath all of this. McCartney's way is actually really, really good for doing panels that are going to be exterior panels that are going to be seen by everybody because it is a nice, clean way to put everything together. Um, but for this, I didn't have any help to work on it because Logan is back in school. So I did what I did. I did get the panel dive, but I'm not as worried about it as you might think. Uh, this is going to be a driving, working vehicle. Logan is actually going to be using this for his yard business and stuff, so it's not gonna be a vehicle that's just gonna be on the show scene all the time. We're actually planning on doing a roller paint job on it. We're not planning on making this a super duper top end show car, at least not initially. Logan can do that with his money after we do this. Um, and so that's really what this boiled down to, is I just wanted to get it done and show you that this is a way to do it. The idea worked, but it didn't work as well as I had hoped it would work. The quenching really didn't make that big a difference. And the backing panels, I think, helped reduce heat, certainly helped reduce blowouts on the panel because I had zero blowouts when I put the backing plates in there. But the welding was actually better too. My welding skills have improved a little bit. I've got the welder set up pretty much the way I want it now. And so everything worked better for that. Do me a favor, go out and check out the Patreon account. At the uh, $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me on Zoom. 
Uh, the names of the guys who have done that, who have put their money where their mouth is, are going up uh, right over here. I'm just going to say that and hopefully uh, when they do it in post, they'll be able to figure it out and get it right. But if we've done anything at all with our stuff to help you and you feel like we have done a greater service to you and you've helped you work on your car in a better way, you might think about doing the support. It is not necessary. I'm not saying you have to do it to support Auto Restamont. Anybody who comes in here and watches the video supports us. But if you feel like we've really done a value added for you, it might be a thing that you could think about doing. It doesn't have to be the $10 a month level, just a couple of bucks a month will be fine by me. Um, also, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Why haven't you subscribed to the channel? Go out and click that bell for notification when you subscribe and you'll be notified of everything we do theoretically through YouTube. We're on our march to 100,000 subscribers at this point. We're at about 94,000, I believe, right now. So we're really danger close as long as YouTube doesn't go in, into a massive cull uh, like they've done in the past and take viewers away from us. So if you will go out and take a look at that and do that, that'll be great. Finally, do me a favor. Be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you on down the road. So next up, we have to make a perimeter inside of this. I don't know if I want to show this. Let me know in the comments below, folks, if you want to see us set up the under, uh, under piece that we're looking at doing for the Ranchero for him to have wells underneath there to put stuff in. Because, you know, he's going to stuff crap in there, and, and eventually it's going to rust out because he's going to have clothes in there that stink. You know, it's going to smell like a boy's room. But if you want to see us build and develop that, I know it's going to be really limited, but it's kind of like, you know, if you like watching the show, maybe you want to see that. Let us know in the comments below. You guys, see you later.